in St. Paul. It's Reverend Buford. I'm just here to relay just a few announcements. Uh, if Miss Brenda Reed needs to add some more, she shall add some more. But for now, I have a few things. From Reverend Marie Davis, she would like to remind you that Friday nights at 7 o'clock, we will have our prayer service via teleconference. The calling post went out earlier today. If you have not received it, the phone number is 857-232-0476 and the code for the prayer service is 280088. Reverend Davis will try to have one a little more regular but she prays that you join us um, as they pray for the world. You can give her a call if you have any concerns or any questions. She says her phone number is 678-982 9662 and she prays you have a wonderfully blessed week the next announcement that i have came via email to each and every member of saint paul in regards to the social action committee she they say that the presidential primary march 2020 the may 19th 2020 election primary has been postponed to june 9th of this year um, advanced voting will begin May 18th at the Newton County Administration Building at 8 a.m. going up until 5 p.m. If you have received an application for an absentee ballot, please mail this application in. And if you receive your ab absentee ballot, ballot please mail it to the board of elections office as soon as you can. If you voted in March, your vote will count will be counted on election night and if you did not vote in March, you will receive a ballot for the March presidential primary and a ballot for May primary. The candidates who win in June elections will be listed on the ballot in November. And if you have any questions, please contact Sister Ruth Banks at 404-805-5865. St. Paul, and again, it is a pleasure to be in the house of the Lord, standing here, seeing the work that's going on in the house of God. We both came in, Reverend Sugar and I, with shouts of acclamation to our Lord and our Savior. Once again, we find ourselves in an unprecedented time coming into the house of God, and we're sort of getting used to this new normal. So with that, wherever you are, I will ask that you stop and just be in meditation with me and pray so that you will hear the words of God this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you once again thanking you for life, health, and strength. Father, we come praising your holy name. Look at what you're doing in the world, oh God, that's causing us to stop and pause, to look up, to thank you, to praise you, to glorify you, to magnify you, to elevate you, O oh God, because there is none other like you in all the earth. We praise your name for you are worthy, O oh God. And Lord, not only that, you have called us for such a time as this. In every, in any circumstance, you have said, learn to be content and give you praise. So, Father, we come acknowledging you that you are King of kings, Lord of lords. As we celebrate this first Sunday after Easter, oh God, we lift up holy hands, praising your holy name. Oh, Lord, we thank you 
for your love, your grace, your mercy, your guidance, your protection. Lord, we praise you and we thank you for all that you have done for us from down through generations until now. And oh God, for what you will do. For you said we are your people, you love us, and God, we love you more than ever before. Come near us, oh Lord. Continue to put a hedge of protection all around us by day and by night. Continue, O oh Lord, to walk with us and talk with us and draw us closer and nearer to you, O oh God. As we look around in the world and see what's happening in the world that we live in, around the world, in our businesses, and our economies, oh God, we can't help but stop and say, Lord, you warned us in your word. You told us in your word what would happen, oh God. That there will come a time when you will say, what mountain do I worship you on? And all you want us to do is worship you in spirit and in truth. So Lord, we come humbly down before you. Because we know you are our Lord and our Savior. You are our Redeemer. You are our Deliverer, O oh God. Now, Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus that you forgive us for our many sins that we're committed by thought, words, and deed against you, O oh God. Oh, Lord, yes, we sinned against you. And you are showing it in the world today that you will have no other gods before you because you are a jealous God. So, Lord, right now we cast away everything that is not of you. We give it up, Lord, in the name of Jesus. That you will continue to be with us and to cover us. We plead your blood. Now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, all those that have been impacted, those that are suffering from the virus pandemic, those that have lost loved ones, oh God, we ask that you will comfort them, oh God. We ask that you would continue to be with those frontline workers, those healthcare workers, doctors, nurses, physicians, volunteers, public servants all around this world, oh God. And Lord, just not here in the U.S., but in every nation in this world. When we look at the world, oh God, we see you at work. And we ask that you would just protect us. Be with those who have lost their jobs, oh God. Those who are, are, are in need. When there was homeless, oh God, and when we had plenty and we would not give. Now those that were pl plenty are finding themselves without Continue to provide for our needs, oh God, because you said in your word, you will supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory. And oh Lord, we are in need today, not just for the physical food, Lord, but for the spiritual. Yes. We need you, Lord. Yes. Look at us, oh Lord. These are your children, some who have gone astray and have no alternative but to reach out to you, God. And you said in the times of trouble you will hide us. And oh Lord, we are in trouble. Yes. We are in trouble and we are in need of your divine power. It's only you, oh God, who can give and, and with your meticulous give to those scientists who are looking for vaccines to help bring about a vaccine that will cure those that have the coronavirus or the infection. Be with our children, oh God, where they are out of schools and online learning is taking place with teachers and superintendents of schools all over the world. Give them a mind to do the work, oh God, even online. Because the enemy wants to sift them, oh God, our children, our ideas, our creativity. And oh God, be with those businesses that will employ your people that will work and be able to provide for themselves and their families as well as to support others. Oh God, continue to bless this congregation, our pastor, our ministerial staff, and the work and the efforts of what is being done here, oh God, to give you glory, that we will be able to meet the needs of ministry in the community, oh God. Bless our federal, our state, our local city governments. 
Bless our leaders all over the world that they will make executive decisions that impact your children and those that are yet not coming to the fold to be believers that they make the right decision seeking your godly wisdom and counsel and not what will benefit them, O oh God, for themselves. Oh God, continue to deliver our sick and our shut in, even in this congregation. Be with them, oh God, and let them know that they are not forgotten. That you are a breath away, and not only just for them, but for all of us. Oh God, continue to show your power and your glory, and continue to let us lift up our heads unto you. We thank you, we praise you, we glorify you, we magnify you, O oh Lord, like we've never done before. Now continue to be with us, continue to guide us, continue to protect us, and we will forever lift our hands to you. We, Jesus, holy and precious name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. I will be doing the Old Testament scripture, Psalm 15, in its entirety. And it says, O Lord, who may abide in your tent? Who may dwell on your holy hill? Those who walk blamelessly and do what is right and speak the truth from their heart. Who do not slander with their tongue and do no evil to their friend, nor take up reproach against their neighbors in whose eyes the wicked are despised, but who honor those who fear the Lord, who stand by their oath even in their hurt, who do not lend money at interest, and do not take a bribe against the innocent. Those who do these things shall never be moved. I'd like to say good morning to everyone and thank God for uh, another Sunday to come forward to praise his holy name even though we are not in our sanctuary but the Lord has ways for us to get the word to each and every individual Amen. and we praise and thank God for that this morning the scripture I'm about to read Matthew 28 chapter beginning at the 16th verse where well, Jesus has now arisen, and now he has come in together with his disciples the third time without Judas, because Judas has gone to the place where he, he, he needed to be. So now he's coming together to talk to the 11 disciples, to give them the great commission to go out in the world. Matthew 28, beginning at the 16th verse. Now when they were going, behold, amen, excuse me. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain, where Jesus had appointed them. And when they had saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Yes, yes. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go, that is the key word in this scripture. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. The word of God for the people of God and thanks be unto God. Good morning again. God bless you and I pray that you're all well in your perspective places. Here this morning, if you'll join me in Luke's gospel, the 24th chapter verses 1 through 32. We're not going to read the whole piece, but I want you to be able to go back later and read this whole story. These are the events that took place after the resurrection. These are the events telling how Jesus had told them that he was coming uh, out of the grave and he was coming back. And, and, and now they are being fulfilled. Watch how the 
things developed and how uh, the events took place after he got up out of the tomb. Join me, if you will, in that 14th verse of this 24th chapter, and it reads, And they talked together all the things which had happened. And as they began to keep traveling down toward verse 29, you will find these words. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them. And it came to pass, as they sat at meat with him, he took bread and blessed it and break it. He took bread and blessed it and break it. Again, we got a similar to him having the Passover meal with some strangers. And for for he took bread, it blessed it and break it and gave to them. And their eyes were open and they knew him and he vanished out of their sight. And they said one to another, did not our hearts burn within us? While he talked with us, by the way, while he opened up to us the scriptures. I'm so glad this morning. I'd like to use for a title, a subject, something similar to this that simply says, I wish someone would catch on fire. I wish someone would catch on fire. God bless and sanctify the words, the sermon, the things that are about to go forth as only you can do. Help us to please you in our walk, in our life. Help us to please you in everything we do. Let Jesus' light shine in us. Let Jesus' light shine through us. I wish somebody would catch on fire. It's interesting this morning, after the events of the empty tomb, we find that the ladies came, Mary Magdalene, Jesus' mother Mary, came to the tomb only to find that Jesus had gotten up and was no longer there. But the interesting thing, if you follow this this story, when they got there, the, the, the angels were sitting one at the head and one at the feet. And, and Mary looked in and said, Lord, he's gone. Where is my savior? And when she looked in, she thought the individual next to her was the gardener. And she says, sir, I am here for my savior. And they've taken him. And he revealed himself to her. But on one account, you'll find the angel said, we know who you're looking for, but he's risen. He is gone. Now they understood then that what Jesus had already been saying, he's going to die. Three days, he's going to stay in the earth. Three, three days. One, two, three, three days. He's going to stay in the earth. But on that third day morning, he's going to get up. He got up, y'all. I'm here to tell you, he got, he got up. And when he got up, he had all power. Now watch, watch as the events continue to unfold. The ladies ran back to tell the disciples, 11 of them who was gathered together in one place and told them, look, Jesus done got up. He's, the tomb is empty. So when they came running, uh, Simon beat them all there. And when he got there and they saw that the tomb was gone, only the clothes they wrapped him in and they were still laying there, his burial clothes. One some glad morning when this life is over, I'm going to fly away. And if you come looking for me, hopefully all you'll find is my burial clothes, somebody. Now watch, now watch. As they journey back from where they had just ran to see an empty tomb, something was taking place a little farther down the road. On the road to Emmaus, there were two gentlemen, one named Cleophas and the other gentleman they don't name. As they was walking down the road, Jesus joined them in their travels. But they were not disciples, but they were called disciples of Jesus. They were not part of the 11, but they were still disciples of Jesus. How do I know? Because they came, put their lives in harm's way to be where Jesus was before he was crucified. Yet they put themselves in harm's way. You have to understand the Jews are going out of their way to kill anybody that's in the way of Christ. They're going out of their way to persecute and take down anybody that says they are following Christ. Is that much like it is today? You profess, you profess to be a Christian, you proclaim to be a Christian, and the world automatically looks at you and expects you to be perfect. I'm here to tell you, ain't nobody perfect but Jesus. Amen? So you may fall down in your faith walk, but get up. Tell your friend, tell your neighbor, tell your loved one, tell your wife, your husband, get up. You fall down. We all fall down, but we get up. 
Now watch what happens as they are traveling down the road and, and, and they was talking and Jesus wanted to know, what are you talking about? And they begin to say, man, where you been? Don't you know what took place in Jerusalem? A great prophet, the one that we knew were going to come and save Israel. He was crucified, dead and buried two days ago. And Jesus looked at them and began to tell them all things that had been written in the scriptures, how it was to be this way, how he was to bleed, suffer and die and be put in a borrowed tomb. He told them all this and it illuminated their minds. Now, the day is far spent. The evening shades have appeared and now they're getting ready to go in. and But Jesus pretended to go a little farther, but because they wanted him to stay, because their hearts had been illuminated, because what they had heard preached to them, they wanted some more of it. Every now and then, you ought to ask God to give me a little more power. Give me a little more word. Give me a little more strength. Give me a little more of whatever it is, God, that it takes me to walk this walk. Give it a little more of whatever it takes me to talk this talk. Just give me what I need to fight this battle each and every day. They wanted more of Jesus. They wanted they wanted more of Jesus. The scriptures say they constrained him to come on, stay with us for the night because the evening shades appear. Come on, come on, come on, come on. So they went in to sit down for bread. Verse 14, and they talked together of all the things which had happened. And because they was talking about all the things that would happen, Jesus took the opportunity to teach them. Nothing wrong with being taught. And nothing wrong with understanding that there's a lot more we can each and every one of us can learn. I just pray that one day God sends a prophet with the anointing as Jesus to teach me more than I know now. It's nothing wrong with learning. Matter of fact, Paul tells Timothy, study to show thy self-approve. There's nothing wrong with learning. Our people perish for lack of knowledge. There's nothing wrong with learning. There's nothing wrong with having a hunger for the word of God in your life because the more you know, the more you can live and the more you can live, the more you can learn and the more you can learn, the more you can do. Somebody, amen. Now watch, 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 watch. Verse 22 and... Yea, and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulcher. That, 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 that helps me. That helps me to know that the ladies came, they saw, and they went and told, and it amazed everybody to the point they got up to come see for themselves. Sometimes we have art with who God called to preach. I'm a firm believer God calls who he wants to call. God uses who he wants to use. If you look at this scripture, he had the ladies go tell the disciples before they came back. He had the ladies go spread the news that Jesus had gotten up that day. He had the ladies to run and tell the good news that the resurrection had taken place. So when God sends you word, it can come by way of a baby. Take that word and run with it. God sends you a word. You don't know who's bringing it. Just know that it's God. But you got to study to show yourself approved. Now we find that they are. Convince Jesus to come in, sit down, and break bread with them. They convinced him to stay a little while because what he was teaching them illuminated their hearts. They constrained him and, and urged him, don't go, stay with us just a little while longer. I don't know, perhaps they realized a single traveler would fall prey to bandits on the road at night. Maybe they thought that where he was going was too far to make it before the sunrise and he would be safer uh, there with them. But whatever the reason, they wanted more of what they had just received. Every so often, I find myself asking God to give me more strength. Every now and then, I find myself asking God to give me a stronger prayer life. Every now and then, I find God to help me, asking God to help me to love my enemies as well as my neighbors. Every now and then, I find myself asking God to give me just a little more Jesus in my life. If I can get more Jesus, then the valleys won't be so dismal. If I can get more Jesus, the mountains won't seem so high. 
If I can get just a little more Jesus, oh, rough roads won't be as rough. Hard times won't be as hard time. Corona won't have the fear that it has. If I can get just a little more Jesus, they constrained him to come in and sit with them and break bread with them. And when he came in, he did what Jesus always do. He prayed before he do anything. They sat down to meet and he took the bread. He thanked God for the bread. He lifted it and blessed it. Then he broke it. Ah, similar to what he had just done some days earlier when he sat around the table with the 12 disciples and broke bread for the Passover meal, realizing that that was the last time that he would break bread with them in that fashion on this side of Jordan. When he broke bread, they did not understand, but the one that dipped with him was the one that was getting ready to betray him. So after he had broke bread and told them that his time was at hand, now we find him on the Emmaus road with two of the disciples that did not walk with the 12, but they understood who he was, but they did not know who he is in their lives. So now he has broken bread. And when he broke bread, watch this. He disappeared. Ain't that like Jesus? Once you get him on the inside, something on the inside starts to move and warm you all over your body. Once you get him on the inside, pain don't seem to be as bad. Faith it always seemed to come your direction. Once you get him on the inside, everything starts coming up roses. These two men realized when it was a little bit too late that Jesus was right there with them. It says their eyes came open and they recognized Jesus. And when their eyes came open, he disappeared from their sight. But watch y'all. He said, uh, I'm so glad uh, that Jesus was here because did not our hearts burn as we talk with us? Uh, did not our hearts burn as he walked with us? Uh, and did not our hearts burn as he taught us in the way? Did not our hearts burn? I wish somebody would catch on fire just by reading, understanding, and holding on to the word of God. I wish somebody would catch on fire and know that it's all right to love your enemies, all right to love your neighbors. It's all right to help those who are less fortunate. I wish somebody would just catch on fire. After they had reached that joyous point and realized that they was in the presence of Jesus, scripture goes on to remind us that the next thing he did was appear to the 11 in a closed room. 10 were there, one was missing. And he told them, this is not a spirit, it's me. See the nail scarred arms, see the nail scarred feet, see the hole in my side. They understood that Jesus had kept his word said he was coming back. And I want you to know today, he still keeps his word. When we catch on fire, when we become righteous in his eyesight, when we begin to love everybody, when we begin to stand still and let him fight our battles, he will take control of your life. Watch. John 3.16 makes it plain. God, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. But watch. Watch what Paul tells 1 Timothy. He tells him in that third chapter, verse 16, I thought that to be just as simplistic and just as honest and just as great as that John 3.16. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. Without controversy, without controversy, great is the mystery of our godliness. God has manifested in the flesh, justified the spirit, Seen, seen of angels, purchased, preached unto the nations, believed on in the world, received up into glory. Jesus had already came. Paul came late and made it plain that everything he said he was going to do, he has done. And I stopped by to tell you today. 
that he's coming back again. I know that living, he loved me. Dying, he saved me. Buried, he carried my sins far away. Raising, he justified, freed me forever. One day, he's coming back. One day, he's coming back. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. He did all that so that you and I could have a right to the tree of life. Amen. I just wish somebody would catch on fire. Just like those two brothers on the Emmaus Road, Cleophas and his friend who was not named. Amen. As we prepare to exit this morning, let us leave with the closing prayer. If anything said or done, a song you heard has touched your heart and you want to give your life to Christ, we can be reached by dialing 770-786-7785 and someone will contact you ASAP. So if you feel the need for prayer, dial that same number and someone will contact you right away. So let us close this morning in prayer. Come he who is the creator of all life. Keep us when our hearts are heavy. Keep us when our days are dark. Keep us when our pockets are empty. Keep us when our friends are few. Keep us when our wells run dry. For you, God, are the supplier of all our needs. For your son, Jesus, is the hope and the light of our life. 
in him we have put our trust and our faith. So please, God, be with us now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen.